call the meeting to order. We have a roll call. I think we you know where we are. Do you want me to run through it or I'm good? I have everybody's name down. You okay, you've got it. Okay, good. Um, are we short a member? Yes, we are. Uh, you, Mr. Uh, Mr. Burrow resigned. So that's who we're short. Oh, okay. yeah, okay. right. Yeah. Um, how about the agenda? Any changes? We'll, uh, if it's all right with the group, because a bill needs to leave early mm -hmm. under the landlord tenant review, we'll, we'll start in with the crime free sure. housing. I would suggest we talk about the next date under new business because it's election day. The next date. The next day we're in a meeting. Next meeting. Oh. oh, that's right. Oh, that is the number. Right. Sure. Yeah, you're right. Very good. Very good. Very good. Let's yeah. add that. That's under new business number two. <laughs> Very good. Okay. All in favor with those additions? Mr. Chairman, we start to get a first and a second. Not to get technical. We need a first and a second. The oh, so we oh. Have the agenda. Uh, second. Yeah. All right. Very good. Thank you. Good. Uh, you have to vote. Yes. All in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. Okay. Opposed? Okay. Very good. All right. Um, the minutes. I heard some talking that there was one thing, Joe, you had. Oh, said. yeah. Just uh, it, it, the minute says that I asked Bill uh, who's paying for the social <coughs> worker from, that's on loan from Northwestern. Uh -huh. And uh, they're paying for it. Not, I just want the minister to reflect that. Okay. I know the city budget is, you know, especially challenged. And right. Just want that to be clear. Okay. Um, when I'm referred to in the minutes, it's either Mr. Gilbert or just Norton. <laughs> I I'll admit I had Adam do these ones, so I, I I didn't review them to the greatest depth as I should have. So that's that's fine. I'll, I'll fix that, Norton. Okay. Anything else? Seeing none, motion to approve. So moved. And second. Second. And second. second. And John. Okay. All in favor, aye. Aye. Uh, uh, nice. Amendments. Okay. Very good. Uh, public participation. I don't think there is anyone. It's the mayor, but it doesn't appear to be. Oh, is the mayor? Oh, yeah. I forgot. He's just listening. Yeah, he's just listening. He's just listening. Hi, mayor. The mayor is always. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, Old business, um, just before we get to Bill, I have spent a few days trying to reconstruct through all my notes and everything, um, pass those around, um, what we've been doing with all the housing stuff. And, oh, Um, and just very briefly, and then we'll switch and just jump. All I did was, uh, for the benefit of our new members, we got a copy of the landlord tenant uh, proclamation that was done at the city council meeting um, in August of 2019. And that was all, but particularly a lot of the problems we were uh, hearing about with Hunter properties. But we did not specify them per se. We, we tried to make it both landlord as well as tenants in general. So that was one thing. The other thing I thought you might want to see if you don't have this, uh, Jacob Moss was the sort of convener of the Cal Tenants Association. And you can see their goals. I just wanted to give you that. Uh, were those were the immediate ones from this meeting where he handed this out. Um, and that's his contact information. And obviously, after this meeting, I need to contact him to give him an update of where we're at. The other thing is the copy of the City of Evanston model lease. Some of you will remember that Jacob Moss was telling us that this was the common lease that was officially required at to be a landlord and you know, tenant. Apparently, it is a model lease. So it's not a requirement. We couldn't find in Evanston city codes anywhere where it said this was the requirement. Yeah. 
but I include it because we've got our DeKalb Tenants Association that is saying, here's an example, DeKalb, that why don't you look over and see about if we could move to a common lease, which his group would really like to see us do. We know that that would include drafting, it would include <coughs> talking with the landlords, we'd have to do quite a bit, but that's been a recommendation clearly from the DeKalb Association. The last thing you have in your folder, and it should have a blue. <laughs> I didn't want to use yellow. <laughs> this is my attempt to go through just chapter 10 and identify some things that just sort of jumped out at me. Now, remember, this is me. So, for instance, um, there are sections of it that already I know we should change, you know. But we'll go back to this because I would really like to review this because I'd like to move our Chapter 10 discussions that we had for months, you know, into, okay, what do you guys think we could do next? Okay, with that said, let's have Bill tell us a little bit about the crime-free housing review. Hello, everybody. Uh, well, I don't know if everybody has a copy of what was sent out. And should everybody receive it? Should be that oh, Okay. Yeah. So, and it's a lot if you were look, just looking at it online. Yeah. So I have a print on top. And there are three pieces to it. One was uh, the uh, attorney's uh, notes uh, from a year ago when the council took this up. And ultimately approved the second piece. It looks like it truly is a many respect to repetition of that, except these yellow highlighted areas were incorporated then into the local landlord tenant regulations. And then there's a, uh, it shows a model lease and also uh, then a crime-free uh, uh, crime-free lease which is the model lease that the council adopted back in 2012 and it's been amended several times and as recently as five years ago. And uh, not uh, incidentally in August, uh, you may remember back in July, uh, we had on the sixth time that there was an attempt at arson in uh, Eight away bridge, uh, it, there actually was a, a significant fire, and people were jumping out the window. Of the council, I saw the council at the next regular meeting uh, just basically step back and looked at what we have on the books to enforce uh, better uh, landlord responsibility and, and also what the reciprocal responsibilities were. So we had that conversation and went over several weeks, uh, several different council meetings. And um, the crime free lease, do I need to, do you want me to go through that or do you kind of remember the three strike idea and so forth? Mm -hmm. I, I can hit that real quickly, but before I do, I just want to finish my thought. The, uh, uh, the upshot of this was that uh, after seeing the data for uh, ambulance uh, fire and police calls in, in town, and particularly in the Northwest Corridor, 85% uh, maybe a little bit more than that, were to one block. It was Ridgebrook, it was known as Ridgebrook, it was mm -hmm. a great ridge around the, around the corner. So uh, we then did a little deeper dive into uh, the, the nature of the police calls and the, uh, the community learned a little bit more about uh, uh, the intransigence of the, the landlord who has a, a model which is so anathema to to decency that it's, it's hard to uh, envision, but it is true, and, it, and it's been working for them from the standpoint of their, their pocketbooks, but certainly not working for the tenants. And it's basically, uh, you, you don't put any money into repairs or, or fix-ups uh, until or unless you're forced to do so in court, and sometimes, uh, depending on the nature of the case, that can take six months to a year. And when we reported on it, we thousand hundreds of thousands of dollars, literally, that's not an exaggeration, in fines that had been uh, issued and then, and then we had gone through 
the administrative hearing process, which is part of the uh, crime free lease expectations. You get three strikes and then you go to uh, a hearing as a disorderly, uh, the, the complaint is that you are buying a disorderly house and, and, and the, the fines can be $500 or more per unit that's involved in 808 Ridge. That's almost every, every unit that's involved in one another. So, uh, but the courts don't enforce their judgments, uh, or, or the administrative hearing judge can't enforce the judgment. You have to go to the civil, the civil court, and, uh, and which we did, and we have eventually, a year, a year later now, to go ahead, uh, come to another level. And now, two meetings ago, the council passed something called criminal housing management. So, at the civil level, it's not a criminal infraction, at the civil level, it's about as high as we can go. Uh, it's a higher level of fines. There is something in uh, the state statute called criminal housing management as well. We talked to the state's attorney about that. There's a much higher level of proof there, uh, and you have to prove the intent here, the intent to do this and that. And we can't get these people in court, and so far they've resisted it. So, uh, uh, we have uh, uh, gone so far as to get the court to order that they all of their uh, principal shareholders be revealed and, and their interest in the hunter properties and so forth. And, uh, uh, there is a settlement that was separately reached on another pile of fines for another one of their properties just recently that allowed us. This, this was hard to believe, but I, keep, I still keep thinking they missed something. Uh, they meeting Hunter, they're, they have a new attorney to report for them, maybe they're just new on the job. Um, so we're going to establish a special service area at Adoy Ridge, which allows us to, to uh, assess uh, up to 5% of the, the uh, equal access valuation of the property for public purposes. It doesn't allow us to go inside and, and make sure that the cameras are working and the sprinklers are working and the fire extinguishers and all the rest of that, but outside in the more common areas we're allowed to do such things as uh, uh, have cameras so we know when people go firing shells in the air that we know a better idea who they might be and it actually uh, will get us about $100,000 per year and we can put uh, a good share of that also toward some of the, the city costs that are involved in trying to enforce the peace. But this is not the big answer, uh, but it is just eating up so much time, money, and lives you know, because there are families that have uh, come out and, and frankly, in my mind, that snookered. If you, if you go online, look up Hunter Properties, and you come to this video, and it's almost like you're moving on the Gold Coast. It, it really <laughs> is. It, it's shocking. And that's what, and, and for only a thousand dollars a month, you can have all of this and you know, pastel walls and, and, and sheets and all the rest of that. You come in and it's it's a pit. But you, you and some people uh, even uh, enter leases. Uh, now, here's here's where we connect what we're talking about tonight. Hunter is not enforcing the crime-free lease, which requires. Uh, uh, you know, some, some review uh, of uh, people that, do, that are interested in, in renting the places where you have. You cannot look at priors uh, if a person's not been convicted, if you can, if they have. And we do have three gangs that are pretty well, as you heard Bob, I think, the last time, pretty well entrenched there. And they're, they're, the piece is, is enforced on a daily basis, sometimes by them, sometimes by us. It's not a good situation at all. Uh, they should, many of those people who are here are bent on mischief, not to try to protect their families, but they living are, are uh, not on the crime free lease, they're paying by the week, by the month, and so forth. So how do we enforce that? That is my frustration right now. We haven't found a way, uh, short of having the criminal statutes invoked, that would allow us to do that, and we haven't been able to convince the state's attorney's office that that that's a level that we're at. I don't know what else to do to work on. So uh, that's how this paper gets uh, translated into the day-to-day -day of the, the lives of 
people who live there. Uh, I, it's sad to say that a year ago we had to fight it. By this time, it was a year ago, July, by this time last fall, all those units had been repaired and they looked brand new for the first time in decades possibly. If you went in there today, you wouldn't be able to distinguish one from the these are not families moving into these places. Uh, uh, the people who aren't, aren't uh, the best citizens. So it, it is a, uh, it's a, it's an everyday, uh, what should I say, challenge, I guess yeah. is a kind of a weak word, but that's what it is. Um, uh, Bill, if I recall in some of other discussions, if a tenant were to call the city mm -hmm. and say the the whatevers are out the, or you mm -hmm. know that then we, we can have us. the city inspector we do come, yeah come we in. do yep. yeah. and they can let us in the the tenant can let us yeah in. Uh, but we can't just go in and knock on the door you know, yeah, yeah. Uh, and we do that uh, we, yeah. that's how we got to the many hundreds of, of uh, offenses mm -hmm. and, Fines. And it, it continues to happen uh, almost on a weekly basis. We do respond. It recognizes. You know, uh, mm -hmm. you stop by my apartment on your way out. Or, uh, it's not an issue here. And we mm -hmm. Go through the new process, which is to uh, we try. We call uh, the property manager, and uh, we may or may not get a response, and then we write it up as soon as possible. So we're trying to fast track all these things. Uh, then it gets uh, ultimately to a, it's a warning, and then it gets to a fine, and then if, uh, if the fine's not paid within seven days, then uh, you can take it to the administrative hearing, and sometimes it's another 30 days, and then they'll show up and say, uh, Your Honor, uh, uh, we're, we're unable to go driver, and it goes another 30 days, and, and then the robot dope starts. Or uh, we have new counsel, that happens more often than you think. Or we're bringing in a separate council from uh, the, the, in, in the Collar County area. It's a it's yeah. a designed uh, method. It's not accident. And uh, now they've asked us if, this, if the city would like to buy the properties. Uh, they, they paid more than market for the, the properties. Uh, there are some that we would be interested in buying if we could, but we can't. But we have been talking, I can tell you this offline, I guess I can, because a lot of people are working in there. Uh, there are not-for-profits in the Chicagoland area who would take a, a complex like some of our worst complex and, and manage them well. Uh, and uh, they, 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 their overhead is much less in the sense that they're not uh, there to uh, buy bass boats for the owners. They're, they're just to make sure that the properties are well maintained, uh, that reasonable rent is, is achieved for the, you know, the rainy day fund to fix the roof and replace this and that and the other thing. And uh, they, uh, we, we have an example, it's a faith-based group that uh, Lincoln Highway was, mm -hmm. was it 15 years ago was right. 100 properties and, and made a huge difference. And there's communication, there's, there's uh, actually quality of attention and uh, activities and uh, justification by tenants. So that just being a great example of, uh, you know, okay. yeah. especially doing some of the things you know, you're supposed to do. There, there's a reciprocal understanding that mm -hmm. this is your responsibility, this is my responsibility. We have to live up to our responsibility. I, I know it's it's your work, so it shows the model can work, but we have to get the property from this clutch, and it works. Unfortunately, for the hundred people, it's working for them in Indiana, for them uh, Eastern Iowa, and we've had nothing like this since. Uh, but before 2016, we never had anything approaching this. We always had some bad landlords. They might have had several dozen units. And, Pretty easily contained, and somebody eventually buys them out. 
This is a thousand units. Mm -hmm. Times a thousand dollars a month. So they have lots of money for legal defense. Not, you know, not kind of, they do pay taxes and things like that, but you can take a third off the top and they still are making a phenomenal amount of money for themselves and not for anybody else. We have uh, one other example of this on a smaller scale. A person has about 250 units. I don't know that they're acquainted, but he's adopted the model and uh, they are uh, some of the units on uh, Hillcrest and some of the elderly, frankly, they look pretty good. They're brick. They were owned by Paul Saucer years ago and uh, they're pretty well built. And, uh, uh, but you get inside, it's about the same. If you drive behind them, the, uh, the dumpsters are overflowing at all times. And, uh, the city has from time to time abated that, which we have a small budget for it to cover it, but it just becomes such a health issue. And we'll call a waste hauler and say we'll cover the cost of cleaning this up. But obviously that can't be done on a regular basis, or we're, we're you know, the patsies for the, the bad management. So but we will, we have done that. So that's where we are. At the uh, on the whole, the crime free lease works around town. It doesn't work in this instance where they just are determined to work. When you say a hunter properties is not enforcing the crime free lease, or even using it. Oh, okay. I was going to ask yeah. if, because we have it in our, our code, that it's yeah. an addendum to the lease. Yeah. So theoretically, they have to have it as part of yeah. their lease. But they don't. So we have to have, we have to take the court. Uh, Jason is involved in these these things on a regular basis. Yeah. And uh, that's that's not the highest interest of the court. They're more interested, yeah. understandably, in yeah. you know, what is actually happening with tenants. Mr. Nicholas, can I make one yep. addition to that? Yeah, I mean, realistically, we care about the life safety things well before we're going to worry about a lease provision. Yes, we like that, but when we have these health problems that Bill's indicating, that's what we attack first. And realistically, we have an abundance of that currently. We don't have time to go sit through and do each lease enforcement because there is a it's a different component at the circuit court level, which would take longer too. So. We're just not there yet. They also know, with one last point here, this is what adds to the frustration in the, in the, uh, the, weak, the weak position we find ourselves in, which is that we, we have a small shop. Uh, we have Jason, who is, is it happens to be an attorney by profession, but also is a management analyst for the city, so he plays a number of roles. In it. But uh, eats up a lot of his time. Uh, we have a, 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 a person who does the clerking but it really has another, it's another job uh, on top of the regular full-time job. And uh, that's what we appear in court with. And they, the fellows that come in and, and uh, if by ones or twos and, and try to push their way into the administrative hearing process and, and otherwise uh, uh, but, but deeper heal. All right, so let me get this right. So basically, all we're doing is just Keep going over and over and over. They, we get them with fines. We chase our tail. They act like you know. They want to play around. They pay the fines eventually. Then we get them on something else, and we do. We just keep going over and over and over. So I guess, man, you know, and I'm not the brightest, but I guess at what point can we honestly really do something, or we're just going to be here forever? Well, one of the things we've talked about, and I don't know, and I don't know how far we got, but one of the things that we talked about with license. You know, do you have to have, I mean, do you have to, so, I'm going to be honest, I was not here for when we talked about licensing. Okay. I so I'm I, sorry, I, I, I apologize. Oh, no, 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 yeah. but one of the things that we talked about is that, you know, if you're going to be a landlord, you know, do you need to, do you need to spend something for a license that allows you to, you know, rent this, rent this property to somebody? One of the things that we kind of got tied in knots is, is, um, well, the DeKalb Realtors Association. I mean, I, 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 I think we can all see a difference between, you know, the couple that owns a two-flat over on, you know, on, on South Ninth, you know, over by Cheeseboro School or someplace like that, you know, that rents the apartment upstairs, and somebody owns 900 units or 1,000 units, and, you know, and, and, you know, 
One is, well, this is the upstairs of my house, and the other is this, you know, systemic, uh, you know, kind of oppression and, 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 and uh, well, I don't even know what to call it. I think Huntley, Hunter Properties is, is very aptly named. I mean, they, they're certainly predatory, and, you know, and they, and, and, and they prey upon poor people. But, um, I, 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 and I don't know enough about the Realtors Association to know, I know that, that that's, an, that's, an, that's a group of people that generally have resisted, you know, the tightening, tightening code enforcement standards and so forth and so on because, you know, it's going to cost money. But, and I don't know if, if the Realtors Association, um, you know, has identified hundred properties themselves as bad actors. They don't want, yeah. want nothing to do with them. They don't want to walk away from it. Yeah. Okay, I, I mean, I, was, I, I would think so. Really. I would think so. But, but I, you, you've hit on a good thing. Uh, there are two things that can slow this train. One is a tenant association that actually is muscular, but that's a lot to ask of people that are, mm -hmm. are, are worried that they'll uh, be pushed out of where they are because mm -hmm. the landlord will find some way to say, you're not living up to the lease. I'm sorry, you're out. That, that, that is a real fear of some of the, of some of the hundred properties. But um, uh, there have been some other attempts, and I hope they continue, and maybe we'll get one that's pretty much new, because the, re the withholding of rent makes a difference. When mm -hmm. they were, when the hunter was uh, not able to lease their apartments because of the fire, they came closer to us in, in a variety of ways. Uh, then it now, you know, it's over now, but uh, they were sure anxious to get get reoccupied. And the other piece, licensing, uh, DARA, which is the organization, yeah. and, and they've been fearful of that just, I think not so much because they're fearful that they're going to be found out, you know, that most mm -hmm. of them are, are, are what they represent. But uh, code enforcement is an interesting thing. I mean, some wear the, uh, you know, the chip on their shoulder, and some are there just there for results. You know, we're, we just want to see that this is fixed, let's get this done. And uh, so they always throw up the, the example of the person who, with a good landlord, so-called, uh, uh, gets, gets uh, kind of dragged through the mud, even just as aggressively as whatever. Uh, so we have to get over that argument. You get over that argument, the licensing piece, uh, and I don't know, Lord, what you think, but um, sometimes uh, the city attorneys that we've had, I work with in the past, and I've been so keen because they don't think that it helps a lot. My view is that it ought to. There ought to be some, because uh, just like your license tavern, you have a license, and they, that can be revoked under certain guidelines, then, uh, boy, you're, you're eventually going to start carting people, you know, uh, if that's what the problem is, too many underage, it's gonna, and you can enforce that. Uh, same could be the, the case in an apartment situation, right? Uh, you can't play, you, you can't just pick a category, it probably has to apply to all, that's why they get a little concerned. Hey, wait, I've got 30 units, and uh, I don't have as much money, and yeah, sometimes the, the shades don't work, and the uh, water drips, and uh, I don't want you pulling my license because I right. can't do that. So somehow you got to let them know that's not what we're after, right. and be convincing about it. Then you can go pretty hard in the other direction. Does that make sense? Yes, yes, but that's, that's, what, I, that's what I would hope we would be able to do. I, I agree. You yeah, know, I, I, don't, I don't care people that, you know, there's small investors. And, and, and the, the other remedy that the DeKal uh, Renters Association has suggested is, is there any way in the city can build into, say, Chapter 10 with the landlord-tenant you know, ordinance, a way that the tenants have the power to administer all this junk that goes on that the city doesn't have the staff right. you know, to do. And in those regards, he was, the talks I've had, conversations I've had with him, it was more to be, um, try to do something that will codify, codify the, 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 I can withhold my rent when mm -hmm. the following conditions, that's the evidence, right, that's the evidence, have, have occurred 
between myself, my apartment, and the landlord. And most of those written things, you know, you've got to have first contact with the landlord, da -da -da -da, so many days that there's no response. And, you know, and part of that is jumping off from the, um, the, the state law on the uh, right to repair act, where that does indicate that if after such and such conditions are met, that the, the tenant can go and call one of the list of uh, tradespeople to fix the plumbing, the whatever, and that bill goes to the landlord. And Mr. Chairman, I, I think to that, they already do have that legal right in the state statute. They think it's just an education piece. And I'll defer to my other attorney in, in the room, uh, too, if, if, uh, if, if, if he disagrees with this. But that would be, it is a civil matter to where they can do that now. But I think it's, it's an education piece that maybe they, there needs to be a little bit of education on that. That's, that's at least my thought. And that's well, probably me taking a much more legalese approach than I need to. But No, it's OK. That leads me into the, the handout I had in the packet for some of the things with Chapter 10. We need to put in Chapter 10 the definitive state code. This business of not telling the tenant that there's actually a state law. And I understand that the original endeavor was to get some of these things in, and yes, there's mention of it. But then it doesn't mention the actual state code, you know, state. So that's one recommendation I have, bottom line. Is well, we, well, we, I, well, also, uh, along with that, I, I, I wish we could do some education, and I don't know what the appropriate means of this would be. Well, the Tenants Association has attempted to do that, but as you we all know it's very difficult to get that group of other problems. But, but see, uh, the direction I'm going is this. Is that this is, as I understand it, the city has sort of been tied up in knots in the past, partly because the city has attempted to lump these violations together and, and you know, and bring them to court. And say, you know, this, this property owner, they did this, they did right. that, they didn't do that, and so forth and so on. And that's been thrown out. So, so each of these individual complaints by the city has to be adjudicated and some no you have to do them all separately and 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 and, and the uh, as i read the the landlord tenant ordinance all that's directed toward the individual tenant well if you have this problem if you have this problem um and there's there's not a whole lot of if we have this problem because i think I, I i think down the road what would be most intolerant is some sort of a class action suit that, if that's possible, you know, it's not just it's not just my ceiling that's falling apart. It's got mold. Is everybody on the on the whole floor, you know, and upstairs too? Um, and that's I think that has a lot more bump than asking poor people, you know, individually to go to court one at a time. And that's that's partly why Jacob with his group was saying it would really be helpful if the city could do any any items put it in the ordinance be it however it's done where it would be a legitimate way to give the tenant a little more power particularly around these uh, uh, repair problems which are just you know stacking up all the time um, and chairman one, one thing to that though I think tenants have more power with it being a state law than a city code in, in my opinion I think from a circuit court standpoint you're going to make a better legal argument that way than a, than a municipal but that's just my thought on it is I, no. I, would, I would much rather do a class if, if per se I'm not saying this is a class action suit I would want to do it on a state case not a city ordinance case it's just it's more sound law Mm -hmm. um, then at least that's that's my opinion to it. Um, if, if I was the one trying to do that case. So well, I think the other thing, Larry, is actually the references are in that code here, yeah. the state law. So what what a person needs, you know, if you don't know, I'm not an attorney. And most of the most of the tenants aren't attorneys, and Jacob and and, and other tenants uh, do have access to free legal assistance too, uh, but. Let's say they just want to get the word out that you have rights. So they have a meeting and they invite all the tenants and you know, please be aware of this and here's the 
photocopy and make copies. Here, here are the leases and so forth. These are your rights under the, the city uh, ordinances and codes. Uh, and uh, and it has to, the thing is, it has to, it's, it's constant. I mean, where this works in larger in larger cities is it's, it's a well established organization, and you they even have a little office. You can go in there and you can talk to Joe or Sally or whoever, hmm. and they can tell you. This is what you need to do. Here's what we found. Well, so uh, where Jacob is is over here, and, and there's there's some distance to travel to get to here where you have, uh, uh, you know, you have some some clout in the in, in the landlord tenant uh, debate. It's not that I don't think anybody needs to wait on the city here. It's, it's you know it's there, but the hard thing is when you have little money and you have the fear of losing your, your lease, how do you pull all this together and be effective? Uh, and there, the, having a, the police behind it doesn't make any difference. You're not with a police officer in front of uh, Tiffany or whoever else, right? Uh, and they can be pretty intimidating. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, it, it, it seems like a good solution to give the tenants agency mm -hmm. and at the same time we're dealing with a fairly unsophisticated group of people mm. who if you put give them all sorts of notices they're not going to read them right. um, so education is a big part of it and yes. I, I wonder if the the students legal assistance office at the university that helps. Uh, could be helpful um, prairie legal is another one uh, but i've gone through this ordinance a number of times and i and i wonder if we should just throw the whole thing out and try to start over, and maybe Evanston's ordinance, which I haven't seen, um, would be helpful. Uh, because there, there, are, there are lots of, the, the ordinance isn't particularly tenant friendly. All this stuff about crime, that's not, that doesn't help the tenant much. Um, and as the uh, former attorney pointed out, so much of it is not enforced. The city doesn't have the wherewithal to enforce it. So we've got this ordinance that maybe looks good. I don't think it particularly looks good, but it, it's there, but it doesn't really do the trick. Um, the, the only thing I'd say in response to that is, if I'm a tenant, and I'm certainly not real knowledgeable of all this stuff, but if I've got a landlord that is violating something that's clearly stated as an ordinance with the city that has to do with my landlords included in it, then I, at least I have, even if the city can't really assist, at least I have well, I agree with that. something that I can say in the office there, look, I'm not pulling this out of the sky. This is, you know, what you guys have to do. Um, and yes, we may not be have the manpower to to enforce it, you know, and to really. But I I'm really for giving the tenant as many rights and powers so that they can deal with this yeah. from a position of a little more authority and power. If we can't find the staffing to do all this, which I understand why, then. Why not? You're yeah. right. So we give the agency to the tenant. Right. So uh, I, I uh, took a pass to see what Dara would think of the Evanston lease about two and a half months ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was dead on arrival because for the reason that I explained mm -hmm. earlier. But it doesn't mean that should be the end of the discussion. If, if this group or any other group, which is with the tenants, or the Jacob or anybody, mm -hmm. Approach the city council. Here's the real politic, right? So the council passes the code, mm -hmm. the codes and the ordinances. So if a group of people got before the council said, "We'd like to, uh, you to consider the Evanston ordinance," and you get two older men to say, "Yeah, we got to do that." City manager, why don't you do some background and bring it to a meeting? Mm -hmm. That's where you need to be, mm -hmm. uh, because what the, now the, the model ordinance that you're referring to in Evanston does allow like, uh, tenants to withhold their their rent for A, B, C, D, and E, and it's uh, broader than we have in our codes. 
So it's not the, the washer that just started leaking today, but there's a chronic or a recurring or something like that. So, and it's pretty well spelled out. Uh, that's another way to go. And then there are individuals or groups of individuals or a whole uh, tendency of a, of a thousand units, whatever. Uh, and if they are, if people are willing to do that, then we'll give them all the protection they need because they're, we'll protect them from uh, abuse or whatever. Uh, but that's the, from here where we sit tonight, to the passage of that model of ordinance is what needs to be considered, frankly. Mm -hmm. it, it's like anything else. I mean, you know, uh, uh, people formed unions because uh, right. you know, they're tired of fighting one at a time, right? So now as a union, people are a little more, more likely to be of a union, right? So it's kind of the same thing. That's what's mm -hmm. in my own life. I, 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 I wonder if, if uh, if approaching the university could be helpful here, in this sense, I mean, the university, you know, has indicated that, you know, they, 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 they want to have some kind of impact in that neighborhood. You know, I mean, that's, you know, their fate is tied to the, to, to the crime, to the, to the safety, to whatever else happens in that neighborhood, you know, from, from now until when um, And they wanted to help, you know, by sending counseling staff and helping out in some way, programs and so forth with kids after school. Well. We've got a law school, and, and, and the two things that the law school are known for, that, that are, are known for, are first of all the, the, the diversity of the student body. And why do you come to NIU to go to law school? Well, a law students come because they have, as I understand it, a pretty strong commitment to social justice. I mean, that, you know, I mean that's what that's what a lot of people want to do here. And if we if we're talking about empowering tenants, and and these people aren't terribly sophisticated. Um, Maybe we need four, five, six law students, you know, who you know, who you know, who, who have a passion for this kind of work. Um, that doesn't take city staff's time. That doesn't take you know money the city doesn't have. But you know, nevertheless, gives people something on their resume to say, "Look, oh, I did this." You might you might start at a different hunter property. Uh, actually, our, our uh, social worker won't go into 808 alone. Yeah, yeah, right so, yeah. Uh, but Hunter Star, there was a fire there. Uh, it's over at Oakcrest and, and Annie Good, and just behind Casey's over there. Mm -hmm. One of the better kept of the Hunter properties. You can start there. Uh, you know, more like a townhouse setup or a condo setup. Um, but I, uh, but so, so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. there are ways to get into that piece. Mm -hmm. and, and Joe, as a proud alumni of that law school. Yeah. Right? I agree with you. And I use right fifth or sixth for public interest law, which would right. fit this entirely in the nation. And uh, I think if you brought that to a couple of people's intentions, a couple of the professors as well, I think you'd have a very large percentage of individuals who want a system that way. That they have, I'm assuming they still have a clinic in Rockford. Yes. Yes, sir. Um, mm -hmm. If we could get them to have a branch in the hotel. They, uh, so they actually do have a clinic at the law school. They did a new space to where oh. if you're working at the Rockford one, you can do work here at the law school now. So we did that, I think that was the year I graduated, so two year and a half, two years ago. Mm -hmm. So you can't do that now. Yeah, this is the thing that I just can't get past. Maybe it's because I see it on a daily basis, because mm -hmm. I deliver to all the buildings and I deal with them more than I would like to. They simply just don't care. So we can get all these people to help. We can get, we can, we can do our due diligence with everything we're talking about. But these people simply just don't care. Bill stated it's like a revolving door. We hit them on a fine. They, they weed it out, and they just keep going over. Like, and far as I understand what they're saying, with you know, go with the tenants going to the office and saying we have this. <laughs> Hunter just simply does not care. And I, I agree with what you said. So I think we just have to throw this out and come with a different approach because listen, I know every I know all this sounds good, believe me. And this this kind of gets to me because I know a lot of people who live in these buildings personally. And I know some of you know some, some just trying to make it. That's all they're trying to do is make it. They have kids and have families and they're just trying to make it. But Hunter puts them in these positions to where they 
they, they have no out. So some of these people get labeled as bad people or people who do this and that when necessarily that's not the case. And my frustration, and it's not with the city, it, it builds, so don't take this the wrong way, but it's like we have to find another way legally because just keeping the revolving door going on and on and on, it's just getting old. And as a man who has seen it for so long, like they're buying up every building on my route. Like I can't even leave a package anywhere. So what I'm saying is it, it just gets to the point where we have to just quit, you know, asking for help. And people just need to help if they want to help, but there has to be something more legal that we can do because this is just not getting done. This is just, it just keeps on playing the same tune and the same song. And it just gets kind of old, you know, because I've seen it for so long. Mm -hmm. Sorry about that, but it's just, you know, no, no, no. my, you know, the people I deliver to, I do care about it. That's just how it is. No. And it, it just gets old. And, and I have a million stories I can tell you guys right now. It just gets old and it just gets to the point where, you know, it, 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 it makes nothing as a man, but as a human being, it's like, you know, why are you doing this to people? I, I've got to, I apologize. I no, I'll go to another meeting. John, it's Jacob, right? Yes. Come call me. Yeah. And uh, I'd like to be in and get to know what his group is. Does he have a group? Is he, is he trying to do this on his own? Or, you know, what, what can we do to help? But, uh, yeah. yeah. I, but what I said about the model lease and, and doing yeah. that, which is not the same as licensing, but it, it uh, gives agency to tenants mm -hmm. who want to try that, which is always discussed with Jacob. Uh, yeah. And, yeah. Thank you. Thank you all. I'm sorry. Thank you. Okay. Uh, can you briefly, can we skip to the police community? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I wanted right. to have something for you tonight. This couldn't be done. I, oh, I, right. I, uh, right. I will have it at your next meeting. Uh, at that point, I'll be ready to roll it out uh, it's November, I think, 18th for a joint meeting of the Council of Finance Advisory Committee. It'll be the first to hear uh, Bob Riddell here. It's been an interesting month of back and forth. I have an assistant city manager who uh, now has been in the Citadel <laughs> and uh, knows how things work. It's been immensely helpful to me. And uh, I, I think you will be intrigued by what we present to you. And uh, it's more than just a start. It's everything that I could pull together and we're actually going to spend a couple hundred thousand dollars in addition to just moving money from here to mm -hmm. there of new money that uh, I'm hoping we can replicate every year of taking, uh, uh, being wishful and, and confident here that we will because I want it to work. And the, some of the money uh, is, we haven't received it yet, but we're going to hope we get it from the federal government through the state part of the COVID assistance that we're getting, which will help our bio some talent to help us get it. Otherwise, it's a lot of, uh, it's very definitely doing things differently. I, uh, and it's still in this building. We could talk about citadels and things like that another time, but uh, right now the human piece of it, I'm very intent on changing uh, the way we do what we do. Thank you. And I'll be very intrigued by what you say. Uh, sincerely. Okay. Thank you all. All right. Uh, may I, well, yeah. I, I just think, I just think in response to what you're saying that I, and, and, I, I can understand the frustration. If the city's not able to, you know, collectivize all of these complaints, the city can't go in and say, hey, here's 900 instances of this. You know, or, or 300, or whatever the heck it is. And, and you know, and the court just says, no, nope, can't do it. Um, then, then, the, then the alternative, the alternative is, 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 is some kind of class action suit on behalf of, the, you know, that the, that the tenants file themselves. Say, like, this, this is what's in my apartment, and the guy next door, and the guy upstairs, and so forth, and so on. And, and, uh, and if they're going to do anything like that, then they're going to need help. And the city can't give it to them because the city doesn't have the time or the money or the stamp. Mm -hmm. And that's why I say the law school, because I mean that, that just seems like a natural. Yeah. Sure, I, 
I'm I'm the prosecutor for all of these cases. Yeah, against these yeah. people. So I know these really. This, yeah, this is yeah. my life. Yeah, and yeah. as Bill indicated, I'm an analyst. Yeah. I just happen to be an attorney. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's it's that that that's my job is not primarily doing that. But guess what? Yeah, that's yeah. what I'm primarily yeah. doing yeah. right yeah. now. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and as you can see, I have four different commissions. I am the liaison. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys can see there's some suffering to that because I don't have as much time for this. Uh, and I'll be yeah. honest, and I think you guys know that. And it's because of things like that. So I, I can tell you this, I'm frustrated with it daily. I've been in those units. I've been up there. Need it be with an armed police officer, with a code enforcement individual, with it just me going up there. I've been in those buildings. There's times I'm nervous even walking sure. up there because there, as John stated, that there's some interesting people up there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that that it's it's you know, and I've been in there and multiple different I've had law students that live there. That I've gone and visited friends that live there, and I pretty much said, "No, we got them out of there the next week." I, I you know, it, it, I have I have a personal. I've been in uh, those buildings too. I know what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, and, and you know, I, I I can tell you this: it doesn't matter if we fix. Or, I'm sorry, not we. They fix something that day; it's broken the next day. Mm -hmm. it, it doesn't matter. And you know what? I can cite them for having this fire extinguisher gone, sure, they replace it. And, and, and to us, if you fix the problem, case is, you, you fixed it. Your, your violation is no longer there. Even if it goes away the next day, it's a new violation. Because it's a new, though the same issue, mm -hmm. it's a new incident. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that, that's what also frustrates us. Mm -hmm. Because it's it's just a revolving door, as John said. That's mm -hmm. what it is. It's, 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 yeah, it might be good today. It won't be good tomorrow at three. Or, I mean, you know, realistically, they could, they could have an entire crew go in there and do an overnight sweep of that thing, per se. And let's say the entire common area was fixed. I guarantee you it would be less than seven days. It'd be exactly how it was. So there, there's a systemic issue with, with what's going on here. I got a question. Like, you know, what about when some of the other property managers or owners Sell hunter, like, is there a law saying, you know, these people have been not so good for the community, or you can't do nothing, do nothing? It's a hard reality of free markets. Yeah. But I've noticed that, you know, a lot of property would just sell them to them. Well, it's, it's, if some property owners want out, and that's your only option. Good, but no, you know. I mean, I, I get it. I, I've been in that situation of a, of a property owner with my family, and I, there's times you're like, I just can't do this anymore. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you'll take what you can get. So yeah. I, I understand that. Yeah. But, um, yeah. If I could, um, it sounds to me like it would be worth it if we could approach the law school uh, with the discussion we've had. Um, I currently don't really know anybody there. I'm wondering if anyone here could perhaps I make up in their lawyer. I, I could make a at least a preliminary. Yeah, that would be great. Yeah. You know, from the from the discussion we've had, um, and it may be that Norton you'd find approaching them with this public interest tradition and you know we we've got this growing public interest <laughs> issue. Um, would they at least be willing to sit down with perhaps you know yourself, perhaps Jason, with his ex first-hand experience with the dilemma here, um, and see? I mean, even if it's um, hey, we'll let the, the the as an internship kind of idea with a law student, at least get this investigated of how we're going to do all. I think it gives the university a chance to do something heroic. Yes. I think it looks awful good. Yeah. I think it's, you know, nice story and it's good. Um, it would be stupid for them to pass it up. Right. What the show. So that would be great I mean, if you could initiate something there. Then I would also, one other echo to that, Prairie State Legal is a phenomenal service yeah, that does yes, they are. phenomenal work. And I can tell you this. Most of the people for this region are NIU grads. Yep, yep. They're NIU law alum. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. 
again, that's also an approach where if the law school itself cannot, it's a little bit harder when you have a bunch of law students versus sure. actual bar attorneys. Yeah. And Norton, I think you know that. So you still need a couple lead attorneys to figure mm -hmm. it out. But mm -hmm. it, it would be great to maybe get the collaboration. I, I have a tremendous I think that respect for Prairie State Legal. I'm worried about their time, too, because I was on the board for state classes right. for about 15 years. And I know how much work they do there, and, yeah. and, and a well, lot of domestic violence cases and so forth. And that, that's where I think a collaboration yeah. might actually be the most beneficial, because then Prairie State can, yeah. they have a lot more of that knowledge that they can impart mm -hmm. to the students, mm -hmm. where the students can maybe do all the light work. Yeah. But yeah. Mm -hmm. that, that's just my thought okay. process. No, I, I think right. you're right. Okay. And then for the model lease, which I think you got the one for Evanston. Mm -hmm. um, I guess as a next step there, we could all review it ourselves individually. Um, there, I think what Bill had put out did contain actually the first time I've seen a copy of the Cal's model lease. <laughs> that had been incorporated or put in as part of things. You might want to, in your packet, is the one that Bill had, you might want to also look at that and compare them. As I think we heard, the Evanston one has uh, phrases, clauses, legality around withholding rent. Uh, I know that the, the Cal Tenants Association is very desirous having that somehow, you know. So that would be a second thing we all could do. Um, I will certainly contact Jacob and give him an update. I know he's frustrated because with COVID and, and all the other, you know, the Black Lives Matters and all that focus, uh, he's really felt he's lost ground for the Tenants Association, you know. But I'll check in with him, and I'll certainly ask him to give Bill a call, um, and you know, give as much background as I can. Um, as far as my little, you know, thanks for doing that. But, I mean, I think that's incredible. Well, it's like you have nothing else to do in your life. Yeah. Well, as Norton has has acknowledged too, you know, I mean, there are many things in here that we already know the city doesn't have. To manpower to enforce. Um, I simply went through and said, boy, if I don't understand that what this definition means, I'm not sure the students would or the tenants. Um, so please look that over. Um, I will only mention that at the bottom of page three, you probably have something on 10.10b it says every landlord who requires an application fee or a deposit. I, I have read this stuff so many times that each time I read it, I interpret it differently. So it's actually correct the way it was worded. I was thinking it needed to have the application or deposit fee as being both fees. But they, they have separated out the fee from the deposit. So that little thing that I struck in red, that's, don't, don't consider that. Um, did, did you say that we've gotten a DeKalb standard lease? I, I believe it's in, the, it's, it's in the, the tenant landlord, the addendum, the, the packet at the, the well, the time addendum is, but I don't see a lease. Um, I just pulled it out. Where did I put it? Bill <coughs> had it at. He had it back to the municipal code here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so. Oh. Now, what I think I gave Lisa and all you guys and Nadine and Jeff, this is what I'm looking That's what he has in the chapter 10. I, I 
it's, 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 it's like four pages. Right. It, it, it's like page 49. Yeah. It, it is a pretty standard model lease, if you may. I mean, there's not. Okay. Right. Nothing. Nothing out of that. I mean, you, you've seen a. It's not that far off from what you would see in a normal lease. Yeah. But I think it, it's got a lot to it. Upon reading it, though, it looks clear in the sense of it kind of dumbs it down in the sense of not using legalese. So not dumbs it down, it makes it normal wording. Right. Just so like you actually truly understand like, oh, okay, this is talking about yeah. maintenance. Yeah. 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 yeah, it's the appendix B model. Yeah, right, I see. Okay, yeah, we could look at that too. Incidentally, unless my computer doesn't work, it references Appendix G in the Chapter 10, I believe. Yeah, and, and I think that it, it, it's not there. You, okay. You cannot find, because remember a discussion we all had about two months or three months ago? Nobody could find Appendix G. I will see what it is. I, I don't do Maybe that's so, changed. But that's I'm changed. sorry, are you saying B or G? B is in B is wood. wood. Okay, thank you. Okay, so we got that. Um, just briefly, because we'll get out of here. Um, what I did, you'll see me adding wherever I thought we needed to quote the state uh, law, as well as enforce some things where it's not should or substantially ought to, you know, those kinds of wording, to make it much stronger on behalf of the tenant. And you all may catch a lot of things I don't. But at least if, if we work on the lease, if we just review the current Chapter 10, and anything you think could be added or changed, that would be helpful. And then when we come back at our next meeting, which we think we have to discuss, um, depending on how much time Bill is going to take to go over the new concept with the, uh, the community service idea, um, we can at least start in to you know, update and and Norton, you may have had a chance to talk with the NIU Law School, and um, I'll certainly, I wouldn't be surprised if Jacob will have already talked with uh, Bill to try and, you know. So, with that in mind, I think that should conclude what our updates are there. Um, the next thing was the census update, and I know it can, it can be kind of, it's like a struggle. It's just been a real, um, the COVID stuff has really derailed in many cases a lot of things communities have tried to do for the census. But I'd ask Jacob to give us just a very brief update. We know that yes. I think there's a couple neighborhoods that are down. Close well, enough, Garden. That's <laughs> just <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> Are you I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You're good, Larry. I'm sorry. I, it's seven. It's seven forty-five tonight. I get it. My yeah. brain. I, I'm starting to I mean, get quite a major. Is, is there? Yeah. Don't worry. Just a brief. Yeah, I can do a brief update. So actually, um, th though, yes, we've had some struggles in the sense of that. I'm actually very proud to say, in 2010, we had a, a self-response rate of 67.6 percent. I am proud to say we have one of 68.3. So by a half percent we are higher than in 2010. So you know what, I, yes, it, it's still not where I would like it to be. Um, however, I am proud to say that me and my staff have been able to get it a half point higher than it was in 2010. And you know, uh, I'll take, uh, at this point, I'll take any win we can get, um, however small it might be. But uh, we did actually spend probably about $60,000 on marketing efforts. So you probably saw a lot of signs throughout the city. There were some big banners, there were some yard signs. Uh, on top of that, we did flyers. All of you should have received two or three different uh, mailings directly from the city, not from the mm -hmm. Census Bureau, mm -hmm. indicating to do your census response. Mm -hmm. uh, and also, our numbers look bad, though, uh, but the only reason I say that is because Northern Illinois is considered a group corridor, and they fit within our number. 
group corridors have to be enumerated by enumerators, meaning it doesn't actually come into play to our numbers. So we have a, a large population or percentage of buildings that fall into ours that we don't get to count until the actual count is done. So our number is always going to look lower because that number is not added into this right away. So that's the dorms, that's some of the rooming houses. Uh, there's safe passage, the, any of the community or uh, senior citizen mm -hmm. uh, or retirement, whatever you want to call them. Uh, so those numbers uh, don't get seen right away. So, and I, I can't tell you a percentage of how many of those are, are within, so it may very well be 10% of those are, are things that we just can't count toward this. So, um, you know, to me, I see this as a success. We, we've done wonderful, we've tried social media, we've, we've done tons of handouts, we've done quite a few. We've actually, very proud of what we did in regards to census bags during <clears throat> food drives in the Annie Glidden area, particularly. Mm -hmm. We handed out so much census stuff through all the food drives throughout the different churches, different organizations in that area. And I can tell you, we passed out well over 10,000 different items to different people that had the census logo and census information. Now, it doesn't mean one person maybe got two or three of them. It's, it's possible. But I, I can tell you we did that. So I'm, I'm very excited uh, that we did that. And we actually just got a, another le lesson. Uh, <clears throat> the enumerators were supposed to stop on September 30th. The federal government has just extended it through October 31st. So they are, we can do self-responding still, as well as the enumerators will be coming around to make sure they get a complete count. So we have a last ditch after, we're gonna do some social media. We don't have any money to do anything else. Uh, also, we did radio ads, we did uh, <clears throat> promoted Facebook ads, things along those lines. So we really try to get it into everybody's hands to the best of our ability. Um, and, and I can't take a lot of credit for it. I'd like to. It was my staff, yes, but Adam Grubbs, our management intern, really took the lead on this, and he made it his life. He <laughs> ate, slept, breathed census. And I, I will tell you this, now that he's not doing census stuff all the time, I, I think he's like, oh, wow, there's other things to the city you can do. Because <laughs> uh, he's been doing uh, for a solid year of all census stuff. So I think it's, it's, it's he's... He's getting opened up to other things. I don't know that, uh, maybe he wants to go back to census stuff, I don't know. Uh, but yeah, so I, I gotta say, we're, we're in the right direction, we're not perfect, but then again, COVID has hurt every community. Um, and I can say Illinois self-response rate is 71.1%, so we got about a 3% difference from the entire state. Mm -hmm. So again, I'm, I'm quite ecstatic, to be honest, where we're at with it. Because my goal was just to beat what we did in 2010. Mm -hmm. We did that. I would like to get more still in the last month, but to me, we have a win. Yeah. So okay. that, that's my idea. Yes, sir. Thank yeah. you. You said the university is separate, so I'm going to ask you a question about the university. Maybe you just can't answer. Sure. But I would assume that the, the, the pandemic has devastated the response of all university powers. Correct. Yes, yeah, so exactly that, and that's where the university tried very hard. So the university itself actually received a grant to advertise strictly to the students, and they did like seventy thousand dollars worth, and it was food, it was advertising mailers to parents and stuff. Because the Census Bureau made a determination that where would you have been April first? Right, right. And, and and a lot of people didn't realize that. Yeah. Um, but that that is where we're very lucky. The Census Bureau on the questionnaire was if you're a parent and you're filling this out, it says. Do you have any kids in college? If you said yes, you put that kid's name and you said where they went. Oh, right. So it, right. it should be filtered and assist yeah. us. In that. Yeah. But again, they're in all the power counties and that's going to be physical data. Mm -hmm. So again, this percentage is not a true mm -hmm. barometer of, of what we have. Mm -hmm. uh, but we're very lucky that they did that this year where it's actually got that like, oh wait, hold on, did your kid fill the and it, it kind of does that extra step. So hopefully that helps us. Right. Um, I can't guarantee it will, right. but hopefully it does. And also uh, per, what is the, uh, is it FERPA, is the Federal Education Rights? Yeah. Yeah. Rights? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the, there was a ruling apparently uh, by the Department of Education that universities were allowed to do a data dump for the census. 
as an exemption of some of the, um, I believe that's what I was told, that's, that's what I thought it was, um, but it was they got an exemption to say, okay, here's the kids' names that were here, and here's some of the little bit of information. We didn't give you a lot, but there, there was supposed to be a rule. That, that's what I remember hearing from uh, uh, Sherry Taylor and Jennifer Gross over at NIU. So if that truly was the case, that's even better, because maybe we can't get that accurate. Right, right. good. Yeah, okay. but uh, I will say this, the census got jerked around a lot by many different federal agencies, this, this government. Yeah. So that yeah. well, changed a few things. Good yeah. job. Good job. Yeah. And Wilbur Ross hasn't tested positive yet. <laughs> but Stephen Miller has. <laughs> True. Stephen Miller has? Yeah, yeah, he just got a <laughs> <laughs> Yes, he has. That was, that was reported today. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, we... Uh, we heard the uh, old business number three earlier, and we'll learn more about the community services our next meeting. Um, under new business, um, why don't we discuss first the, the next meeting date, because that is election day. Do you folks want to push it a week? Pardon? Do you want to just push it a week? Yeah, that's what I was going to suggest. Yeah, in the past, that's what I mean. Yeah, that's what we've done, you know. So we make it November 10th, Tuesday, November 10th, as our next meeting. Okay. All right. And as we're getting ready to leave, the belonging, a virtual meeting, which is set for October 22nd, 6 to 8 p.m. This is a joint effort between NIU and the city of DeKalb, and Bill Nicholas is heading up, obviously, the city of DeKalb, and uh, Bernice uh, is doing it at NIU with the diversity office. Um, basically, it's like another attempt to utilize a virtual presentation by a Dr. Powell from Berkeley who has a relevant background. And his concept is one of let's focus on getting everyone to belong as helping with all the, the, the racial bias, the, you know, et cetera, et cetera, all of that. So I know both Bill and Bernice at Northern are excited about this. Um, I'm a member of the sort of planning group, and I just want to <coughs> alert you to this is going to go on, and there'll be much more publicity about it. Um, I'm trying to read some background from this professor to, to get a better handle on belonging. We've been putting together questions for him. We really want to know, okay, Who's been successful? What community have you worked with? And what are they doing? So that everybody, whether it's the trade person, it's the farmer, it's you know uh, somebody that's uh, low socioeconomic or whatever, and then there's the bankers. What are you doing? What's the community done to be successful in getting this sense um, that we all would feel like, oh yeah, we do belong and we've got an investment you know, in this community and each other. So that's what it is, and I don't really know much more details <laughs> until I start reading more. Um, but I wanted you to know that. So, okay. Well, um, any other uh, business or anything? I, I can announce another, if anybody's interested. Uh, Youth Services Bureau is, is, uh, is hosting a, a, a two-part webinar that starts it's supposed to start this week, but it starts next week. Uh, it's with a guy named uh, Dr. Bruce Perry, who is an expert on trauma, on child, child, how trauma affects children. And uh, the two-part program is the impact of trauma and neglect on the developing a child. And it's specifically about uh, how it affects, it's, it's a, it takes a neurodevelopmental uh, perspective, so it talks about telomeres, getting smaller as a, you know, AG yeah, accelerating right. as a result yeah. of the stress getting into the body mm -hmm. and so forth and so on. It's, uh, for social workers that are interested in CUEs, those kinds of things, um, yeah, you can do that. It's, uh, 
October 13th from 9 to 12:30, and then the following week from 9 to 12:30, uh, you can you can find out about how to register for it uh, for the from YSB, or I can send you a link and it's free. Um, so great. Okay, I move we adjourn. Is there a second? Second. All right. All in favor, please leave.